Hello and welcome to another Raising Reef video. In this tank build series episode, I'm going to be gluing all of the pipework together and testing the system for any leaks. Since the last episode, I've installed a few additional union fittings to various places along the pipework, which enabled me to completely disassemble it if I ever need to move the tank or if I want to give this pipework a good clean. I've also fitted an additional T-piece down at the bottom that has a tap screwed into it and that will feed the calcium reactor. So all I need to do now is attach all this pipework together permanently, which I can do by disassembling it and attaching each piece in place. Once that's done, we can leak test the system and we can fill it with water and run it for a little while to see if there are any leaks in the system. And once that's all done and we're happy there are no leaks, we can move on to the next stage of the project. When permanently attaching pipework together, you need to pay special attention to the orientation of any elbows. A good tip for this is to make a little mark on the elbow itself, or the fitting, and the pipework, so that when you're gluing it, you can line those two marks up together, and then everything will end up in exactly the right position and where you want it. If, like me, you've installed the union fittings, then this isn't quite so critical as you will have some adjustment in the pipework once it's all put together. Another reason why I like union fittings and I recommend you use them. Check the pipework and fittings are clean and you're ready to start gluing. You run some solvent weld on the inside of the fitting and also the outside of the pipe. Push the pipe into the fitting giving it a, a twist. This will ensure an even coat of solvent weld and making it a watertight seal. The solvent weld melts the top surface of the plastic causing a molecular bond that is very strong it sets very quickly, so you need to be precise lining up your fittings. You only have a few seconds to do so. And it's just a case of working your way along, gluing each part together.
So with all of the pipe work glued into place, all I need to do is wait about 20 minutes or so to make sure that all of the solvent world has cured and we should be ready to start filling it with water and do a leak test. I also got these turn up this week in the post. These are my spouts that I'll use on the end of my return lines to direct the water in the main display. They're a bit baggy. Um, I was hoping for a nice tight fit into the tank connector um, so that I could just wedge it in there and direct the flow and then if I ever need to pull it out and give it a clean. If I solvent weld this in place in order to remove it I'm going to have to undo the actual fitting and I don't really want to be doing that too often. So what I've determined I'm going to do is these are light lock line except they're uh, probably a cheaper alternative. What I can do is actually pull these apart and what I've realised is this outer piece that fits into the housing, if I pull that off, the piece next to it, the next piece along, is slightly thicker. And if I sand that down a little bit, I should be able to make the snug fit that I'm looking for. So that's going to be part of what I'm going to be doing today. So I'm going to be removing these, which come out quite easily. All you need to do is just get it on the edge. That's it, and that bit comes out. And then you've got the piece that is wider than the fitting, that I can then just shave down so that I can get that nice tight fit. So we'll also be doing that. Um, I'll do that first whilst I'm waiting for that to cure and then we can fill it with water and do that leak test. So that's it, we're ready to fill it with water and do the leak test. We've fitted the two spouts either side and they are a nice tight fit now. We've left the plumbing to cure and it's all ready to go. Um, I've just gone round and made sure the union valves are done up nice and tightly and we're now going to fill it with some tap water and run the system to see how it works. All being good um, and there are no leaks, we will drain the system, dry it out, and we can move on to the next stage. So let's get filled up with water. So we've got a fair amount of water in the system. 
let's switch on the return pump and find out how it's all going to work. So what we can do is adjust the gate valve in order to restrict the flow coming down and that will silence the pipework and it will set the level. We've got a leak. It's in one of the pipes that leads down, or the return pipes that leads up from the return pump. Um, it looks like there's a little fracture in the pipework itself, so it's not a failing in the gluing or the fitting. It's actually the pipework itself it has a small crack. Um, that's quite annoying. So I'll have to address that before we can move on. There also seems to be a leak on one of the fittings here where the reducer reduces the pipe down from 25mm to 20 um, I'll also have to look at that. Uh, that looks like it hasn't made a good seal. Um, everything else seems to be watertight. So it looks like the sump that I made is watertight and is not leaking, which is good. And the tank itself holds water. We've just got a couple of issues with a few little fixtures that are leaking, so we can address those and give it another test. Okay, well everything's back in place, uh, hopefully we'll have no more leaks, let's find out. take a little bit of time for the silence um, of the pipework to take effect. Um, with the restriction it will slowly back up until it gets to the point where it's completely silent and we're matching the drain line completely with the return line so the same amount of water is passing down each. must say that I'm loving the, um, the gate valve. It makes adjusting and fine tuning those, um, those water flows really easy. I've never used one before. In previously I've always used a ball valve and I've had an absolute mare trying to make those fine adjustments. This is just so much easier and worth every penny of the, the extra cost it takes to put a gate valve onto your system and I highly recommend that you find that extra money to do so in your system. It just makes so much difference. I don't know if you can hear it but there's a slight trickling sound and that's the sound of the water entering the overflow box at the front. I can adjust the pipework at the back here within the overflow box to set that a little bit higher and that should stop that noise altogether. It does mean cutting another piece of pipe but we can do that in due course. So the only thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a little bit more of water out of the system and that's going to bring the sump level down to the correct operating level so I can just see how it's all going to work. And once I've done that, it all looks good. There doesn't seem to be any leaks now. Everything seems to be sealed up nice and nice and tight. No drips, no leaks. So we can move on to the next stage of the project. 
Well that concludes this episode. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. Take it easy guys and I'll see you in the next video.